already had a break, so let's bring up um, Adam, K4SPD, and talk about POTA and a short recap on us. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, we did uh, go bags a couple months ago. Um, so if you need another excuse to build a go bag, I got motivated after that talk and uh, put mine together for POTA. <laughs> Uh, who went to the hospital? Yeah. Was it good? Was it going in? Yeah. So that, that was my first time. Um, I've been in here in eight years. I've lived in three time zones since then. So I've been to a lot of local uh, ham fests, so that was my first big ham fest. And uh, I was stunned uh, at how good it, good it was. Uh, the talks, you know, the, it's a... Uh, also, it's got a big NASA center there, if you don't know. So, uh, a bunch of engineers. I think it's a... Yeah, the general button is there. Um, so, one of those talks was uh, by a guy who does lightning research at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Um, he did two back-to-back -back sessions. Uh, I only went to one of them, but uh, definitely going to catch the other one next year. Uh, this guy was uh, letting you whack a fang for a dollar. So he you that um, I actually got a really cool deal from him. Uh, there's me trying to be nonchalant on uh, Jason uh, KF6NAZ. Uh, he was doing a live stream. Uh, this is from his live stream of the Poda tent. They had a bunch of swag, uh, mouse pads, and all kinds of stuff. They were doing Poda bingo. Um, so, like, who's activated in the rain? Who's activated on uh, leap day? Stuff, random stuff like that. Um, get in, loser. We're going shopping. So this is every. This was my haul. Uh, I told my wife I wasn't going to spend any money unless it was super rare and super cheap. This is a Motorola Nikon, 125 watt uh, commercial HF radio. It's got an audio issue. 50 bucks. Uh, I needed a head for it and a cable for the head. So I went to a whack of thing guy. I said, I need this cable. He said, you can have this for 50 bucks. So that was uh, this dual head radio, this radio with the siren. Uh, that was 50 bucks. Uh, this guy told me this, 30 bucks. That's, about, uh, that's a DMR radio. Uh, and then old school... Uh, T and C, this thing's uh, just had a birthday, so we're the same age now. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, if you see it all and you fried your brain at a quantum entanglement lecture, uh, and you get forward waiting for the final drawing, uh, hey, Huntsville's a beautiful town, so this uh, little pond is right outside the Marshall Space Center. And then uh, I found uh, like a coffee shop brewery combo about half a mile away. Went, uh, went there for about 30 minutes. Um, so, who's heard of POTA? Who's activated POTA? <coughs> and who has hunted POTA? Oh. Um, so, I'm not a POTA guru. I only have two uh, actual activations. It's back to back for winter field day. I went to Meme and Shelby Forest. Uh, this is my uh, cargo trailer that I used to live in. Uh, there's my 991. These are my dogs. I got a vertical here and then an infant or an inverted dipole here. Uh, got about 40 contacts. Two of them were parked apart. Um, a little bit of history. So the summits on the air started in the UK in 2002. And then Flatlanders got jealous. So they started uh, National Parks on the Air 2016 and they kept it going with Poda. Uh, and it's, uh, it's sort of like field day every day. So uh, there's plenty of ways to do it. You can do it from your car. You can do it uh, with a man pack. Uh, or you can just haul a bunch of pelican cases out there. So there's activators and there's hunters. An activator is someone who goes and activates the park. This is a definition. Uh, oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, so that's a technical definition. Uh, this is a person who goes to the park, 
they upload the log. And uh, for an activation, you have to have a minimum of 10 QSOs. Um, if you don't reach 10, it's a weekday or something like that. Uh, please still upload your logs so hunters can get their their logs or QSOs. Then there's hunters. Uh, this is another picture of my trailer. This is a, an activator. But uh, a hunter can be anywhere. Generally, they're at home. Uh, sometimes they're in another park. So then that becomes a park-to-park -park QSO. If you're ever um, activating and uh, you're trying to work another park-to-park -park or another activator, and you say park-to-park, -park, then you'll skip the line uh, of the pilot. And they'll, they'll say, is there a park-to-park -park out there? Uh, jargon. So this weird uh, definition was in the documentation. Something about putting the word in definition doesn't vibe with me. But um, so uh, another thing to know is a reference. So that's the designator for uh, a park or a site or whatever. It is. So for Meeman, it's US uh, 29 or 57. And it's not always a park. It can be National Historic Sites, National Battlefields, and then Trial of One. Scenic Trails, uh, Scenic Rivers, State National Forest, Wildlife Refuge Management Areas. There's a couple of those in town. Uh, this is a vice president of one of my clubs in Colorado. Uh, he got into the cover of the operating manual uh, doing soda. He's not really quoting that, but he's doing soda here. And then somehow he got on the next edition. Um, so uh, not a whole lot required for the exchange. Usually it's pretty brief. Uh, call sign and a signal report. The, you upload your data. Uh, you can add the MySig info or you can do it later. I'll show you where to do that. Uh, and then the hunter doesn't have to upload any log to Pogo. They can still upload it to Blogbook of the World or whatever they want. It. And uh, plenty more info on that in the activator reference in the documentation. Um, Here's two ham uh, YouTubers, Jason and uh, Mike. <coughs> so they were on a road trip and they were like, oh, let's do photo. So they pulled the map and they just pull off on the side of the road uh, at this National Historic Site. And then uh, they spot themselves, which is one thing you're explicitly allowed to do in the rule. Uh, they're working mobile, so they're just sitting in the car in the parking lot, but they're inside the boundary, so it counts. And then they're passing the mic. So these are all things that are in the documentation that you're allowed to do. Uh, most of the rules are pretty self-explanatory. Don't trespass. Don't uh, oper operate within your legal limits of your license. You have to be inside the boundary. I'll show you an example of that local for the parking lot and not in the boundary. Uh, it's not a contest. Some people would beg to differ, but you are allowed on the walk band. Uh, you can activate aeronautical. So I don't know why you would want to, but if you were in a plane or a helicopter above a park, you could activate both. There are over 11,300 references in the continental United States. This is a pretty zoomed out map. We're going to see another version of this soon. If you go to Poda.app, this is the first thing you'll see. These are active spots. Um, Spots fall off within 30 minutes if uh, nobody's respotted you. You can spot someone else here. There we go. You can sort the spots by any anything you want to. Quick link to the documentation. Uh, quick link to activations. So these are scheduled. You can plan ahead when uh, if you want to get a rare park or it's in a rare area. Add a spot here, and then uh, side menu over here. I'm going to show you that next. But the the UA, the UI, the UX is really excellent. Um, so you never, I never spend more than six seconds uh, trying to look for something. Here's the side menu, uh, spot activations, map, park list, uh, my hunter log. That's a good one. Uh, so 
I actually found that I had a, about 100, 100 contacts just from working at T8 when I was trying to get work all states before I moved out of Texas. Uh, here's the documentation. Like I said, it's really great. Here's where you upload your logs. Uh, you can do an ADIF file, and if you did it, uh, set up your logging software with the MySig info, you can just add the part here, and it'll pull up uh, the location. It'll automatically find parts to parts too once uh, the other person uploads there. If you're old school and you're doing pen and paper, you can do uh, do manual uploads too. Uh, you fill this top row out, everything persists here, you just can't change the time to call time. Uh, here's the part list for uh, Tennessee. There's 260 references. All but one have been worked, but the one that hasn't been worked is in uh, for near Chattanooga. Uh, here's a map page, uh, a little bit closer. So we got one inside of Shelby Forest. We got one at Germantown and Wolf River. One is in Overton Park. Uh, and then you got one on President's Island. And then here's me and Shelby. So you got plenty that are right here. Um, you can drive up to most of them. If you click on a reference, it'll take you to this page. This is the one for me. Then. You've got all your info here. Uh, early shift awards, so if you activate uh, between these hours, basically before 9 a.m. and after 7 p.m., uh, then you'll you'll get an award for that. Link to the State Park website, methods uh, for access, methods for activation, and the most recent activators. Here is, uh, here's another one, That's, this is the one off uh, Wolf River. You might not recognize this area because Wolf River goes all the way through here now, but natural area is still here. This is why boundaries are important, because you couldn't just park, you have to actually walk 10 feet onto the trails to activate this one. Uh, here's something cool I found today. If uh, you go to the same website that's linked from the reference page, scroll down, Tennessee has a PDF map. And then these maps are geo-referenced, so if you open them in a Vinta, uh, which is a free mapping app for uh, Apple, Android, then it'll show your it'll show your current location. And then you can do all the other things that it does, drop waypoints and uh, put a route into it, but uh, helps you make sure that you're inside the map. This is the one that's inside Shelby Forest. Mm -hmm. And then here's the one in Overton Park, just to show you that Google did a pretty decent job getting the boundary correct. This is the state's map, this is the Google map. So. Uh, this guy was on the spotted page last night, full-time RVer. He's got a lot of awards for hunting. Uh, he's a diamond activator. Uh, so he's, he's done a lot. Uh, he's probably staying in parks in his RV, uh, being pretty busy. He's got the early shift, early shift, hunter and activator. Uh, they have special events, you get an award for those. And this is all automatic. Uh, you, you upload your logs and these awards just pop up and they're free. Uh, this is former vice president, or former president of one of my, one of my Colorado teams. He's a soda king and uh, he's double dipping. So he uploads his logs to soda and then he uploads it to POTA. He doesn't have any, as many awards, but he's got some interesting ones here. So. He's activated a few places over and over and over again. He's got uh, the Oasis, the Fox Den, and the Bear Cave activator. And uh, this is hard to see, but all of these are the same spot. So he just goes into the National Forest in his backyard. He doesn't just like, walk in, he actually hikes them uh, pretty strangers. Bob's also cool because he just does VHF. Uh, well, he just does FM, I should say. So he'll do. Uh, VHF, sometimes UHF, like 400, he'll do 1200 uh, and six meters. And so then usually he just has to carry a handheld and a Yagi up the mountain. 
And then uh, you may be a hunter without knowing it. So um, I created my account after I realized I was in a, in a POTA spot on winter field day. And then all this popped up. So this is just working at T8 one day or one uh, Saturday afternoon. And all these guys were activating. And then you can work, sort of like you can work four grid squares if you have the intersection of them. You can work overlapping or intersecting or bordering references. And then you can have a two fur or a three fur. This guy found a four fur. So you see they're all, all at the same time, but a state trail intersecting a state trail and a national historic park that's part of a national park. Uh, I'd recommend Hammers, uh, free logging software, WebBase, or an app. They have a template for parts on the air. Uh, you just put in your your reference, and then if they were a part two, you just add theirs. And it's a really simple UI. Another one I found out about today that uh, was re released at Huntsville was World Radio League. Uh, supposedly another just really easy logging software. Uh, so my recommendations, make an account on Hoda.app. Uh, join the Facebook group. Uh, a lot of my pictures from this presentation or from the photo group. Just lots of inspiration, lots of interesting things going on all the time. And then uh, activate. Go to the places that I, I showed you. Uh, they got rotated again, but here's my, uh, not my, here's someone's photo finger card. So. Any questions? Cool. Well, thank you, Adam, for that. We appreciate that. Um, at that, that is the end of our presentations. I'll put another shameless plug out there, zap that QR code, and give us some feedback on the signal report. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Made by hand and seconded by many people. All in favor, please say aye. Thanks, everyone. See you all next month.